the neat thing is that only one uh, or only three chromosomal polyploidies actually persist until birth, the first of which uh, we'll consider as Down syndrome. There's also Edwards syndrome, which is trisomy of 18, and Patau syndrome, which is trisomy of chromosome 13. Now, we're going to spend a lot of time looking at Down syndrome and uh, look also at some visualization techniques or uh, techniques we use in genetics to test for Down syndrome and how those might look. So here we are with Down syndrome, uh, trisomy 21. You can see in this karyotype clearly there are three chromosome 21s. So let's take a look at uh, one of the visualization techniques that we might use uh, during uh, pre-implantation or peri-implantation diagnosis um, or amniocentesis. Here is a graphic of FISH, fluorescence in situ hybridization. Uh, here the chromosomes have been stained, 21 has been stained in red. Uh, fluorescence and chromosome 13 is stained in green fluorescence, you can clearly see that there are three chromosome 21s. So after an amniocentesis sample, uh, the chromosomes can be analyzed and if we see that there's trisomy of 21, then there are choices that could be made by uh, that uh, mother or parent pair. Here's another technique that could be used now that we have uh, much more detail in uh, DNA sequencing and microarrays. Uh, we examined the technique of microarray and FISH uh, in our previous lectures on uh, molecular genetics in cell biology series. Here you can see clearly that there is an overexpression of the sequences found on chromosome 21 exhibited by the arrow here. So chromosome 21 has extra, and we can tell then that there is probably a trisomy of chromosome 21. May not be the entire chromosome, but we'll take a look at how that manifests here shortly. Here is another way we might look at it now that whole genome sequencing is available, again from amniocentesis or pre-implantation uh, diagnosis chorionic villus sampling. We'll look at those techniques uh, later on in the lecture series. But we can see clearly here um, in this normalized spectrum that chromosome uh, 21 has more gene product than the rest of the chromosomes. You can see in the gray area that sort of normal expression and in this uh, purple bar you can see that there is certainly a higher expression of chromosome 21. So those are three techniques that we could use to uh, diagnose uh, not just trisomy 21 but any of these chromosomal uh, disorders in which we're seeing larger chunks of chromosome either full uh, polyploidies or partial polyploidies. Um, You've probably heard that um, the older a mother is, the more likely we are to see these chromosomal abnormalities. And again, that's because non-disjunction is more likely in older cells with older apparatus. Uh, in general, we'll see one in about 850 children that are born uh, have Down syndrome. However, you can see by this graphic that it becomes much higher when we look at uh, mothers over 35. We see sort of an exponential increase such that by the time a woman gets to 50 um, and a fetus gets to a live birth, there's almost a 1 in 10 chance of the child having Down syndrome, which is a very high risk. And this is why um, we should be doing uh, pre-implantation uh, diagnoses or amniocentesis and chorionic villus testing um, if the parents would like to know what the possibilities are or if they do have a conceptus that has one of these disorders. Again, all of those techniques can be used uh, not just for trisomy um, but many chromosomal disorders. So. Interestingly, uh, with the systems of checks and balances, our um, body will uh, spontaneously miscarry most abnormal chromosome uh, situations, 
even uh, they say only about 20 to 25 percent of Down syndrome uh, conceptuses actually make it to birth. And, uh, you know, so our, our, the systems in general are working. So it's not entirely common that we see these disorders, although trisomy 21 is more of the common ones and it does persist and survive uh, through sort of middle life uh, into the 30s, perhaps even 40s, even further as our medical systems advance. So we'll take uh, a specific look at some of the clinical diagnoses, the features that we might see in a Down syndrome child. I really like this nice graphic here um, of our Down syndrome child. But in general, we'll see a smaller head, smaller face, fairly sparse um, hair, as well as some changes to the eyes. We see uh, that there is um, uh, fairly short eyelashes, as well as um, bright brush field spots, which are small white spots around the iris of the eye. We also might see that the ears are small and fairly lower set, as well as having uh, some abnormalities in the palate. The palate is slightly arched and often we'll notice a protruding tongue. Again, not all of these symptoms will necessarily display, but Down syndrome does have a pretty um, consistent manifestation, including this broader, shorter neck, and then developmental delays are fairly varied in Down syndrome. So it might be fairly extreme or it could be fairly light. Um, and we're not entirely sure why that is. But again, um, many conditions are multifactorial. So perhaps environment and nutrition and such uh, have an impact on that. We also notice that Down syndrome patients have hypotonic muscles, meaning that they don't develop full contraction strength. Um, and then here is a pretty classic or a couple of classic images of uh, how Down syndrome manifests itself. It's a pretty characteristic appearance. And again, trisomy 21 is one that we should certainly be very familiar with um, for the USMLE exams uh, because it's a fairly common trisomy or chromosomal disorder. So now I'm going to move into talking about uh, some less common situations, but Down syndrome gives us a good position to look at them from. Uh, this only happens in about 2% of Down syndrome cases, but it can happen in other uh, chromosomal or genetic disorders also. We may see mosaicism show up. Uh, chromosomal mosaicism, where some cells have three chromosomes and some cells only have two. Now, how could this really happen? We've certainly seen it happen with the sex chromosomes, and it's normal with the X chromosome that one would form a bar body, and we've certainly discussed the idea of uh, mosaicism of X chromosome-linked characteristics, and we'll dig more into that in the future. But here we have a situation where something happens early in development and one of the cells is maybe able to rid itself of the additional chromosome. We're not quite sure how that happens, but some cells are able to do that or trisomy corrections. Um, or you could have something go on like a, a Robertsonian translocation. I mentioned that in an earlier lecture, and so now it's time to dig into precisely what a Robertsonian translocation is. Even though it's fairly rare um, as a cause of Down syndrome, it's a great opportunity to bring it up. So what is a Robertsonian translocation? To start with, it's uh, two acrocentric chromosomes that uh, may have some kind of uh, translocation event between them such that the two long arms come together and the two short arms come together. And depending on how this works out in cell division as chromosomes segregate from each other, you could end up with some uh, cells that have a balanced situation where they have all of the genes that would have been on both chromosomes. And you could have some cells that come out that are not balanced um, as in they don't have all of the products. And so in this way, we might again end up with a mosaic um, of Down syndrome, but 
Also, we could see this happen during uh, zygote, for, I mean, uh, uh, oogenesis or spermatogenesis. Um, and we can even see that some patients with Down syndrome could have, by chromosome number count, one less or actual a normal number 46 chromosomes. And so Robertsonian translocation is uh, something that you should understand and uh, how it could lend itself to having uh, the same chromosome number, although they won't match up and pair properly. Um, so 45 or 46 is possible and mosaicism is possible. So another way that we could potentially end up with Down syndrome, and again, uh, not that it's common, uh, in fact, it's fairly uncommon, but we could have a partial trisomy. And in this case, we could have a variable expression um, of Down syndrome because we have a partial additional chromosome 21 rather than having three complete chromosome 21. So um, again, all of these are examples uh, using Down syndrome that could happen to any number of different chromosomes. You could have partial uh, trisomy of uh, multiple other chromosomes, including ones that are not classic, um, uh, ones that make it to term. So uh, some of the other chromosomes other than 18, 21, and 13 could be viable with partial trisomies. So as I mentioned, only three autosomal polyploides are viable, but Down syndrome is the only one that is viable and uh, survivable into uh, middle ages. Edwards syndrome and Patau syndrome, you should certainly know is trisomy 18 and trisomy 13 respectively. However, we're not going to cover the details uh, because the details of manifestations, um, how it uh, displays clinically, are fairly similar and they're much more severe. And uh, because they don't survive generally more than a year, um, we're not going to, obviously the, the chromosomal dosage is far too much. Um, and we're not going to examine those. You do need to know again, respectively, that they're trisomy 13 and uh, 18, but uh, not so much of the details. So on that note, we've covered our full chromosome polyploides. And in the next lecture, we're going to move on and look at some of those uh, partial chromosome uh, abnormalities. So I look forward to seeing you then. <music>